We're back, everyone. Uh, you've got Britt and Bailey here. We're going to be um, watching season one, episode six, titled Home Again uh, of For All Mankind. So we love to do these reaction videos. For All Mankind is one of our favorite shows, and we're really appreciative that you all watch alongside with us. So thanks for that. And thanks, Bailey, for joining me tonight. Of course, this is always my favorite night of the week. I'm ready for the Brit and Bailey hot take. This is going to be fun. <laughs> All right, here we go. I love this idea that it's that many Apollos happen so quickly. Yeah. I know, I was just talking with somebody about how cool it is that, like, Apollo kept going in the show, you know? And just to think of the possibilities. 23. Irene Hendricks. Yep, I know. I was shocked too the first time I saw this. Right. Not our girl Margo. Thank you. Thank you all. I, mean, I can only say that I stand on true, the shoulders true. of giants. It's exciting to see that like this could have potentially happened. I don't know. But Kennedy's still president. So does that mean Apollo? Well, I'm trying to think, or is it Bobby at this point? I don't know. Or do Oh, that would make sense. Bobby. Like, and the, the Apollo didn't impact that at all. <laughs> <laughs> about 5, other Why do we get the feeling there's a reason you're keeping me in suspense? I don't know what you're talking about. The astronauts are in ranking of seniority. Ellen Waverly, mission commander. Oh, fun fact. Harrison Liu. By the way. Yeah. Okay, so the ERA, I find this really interesting. So obviously, like it's had this like very long legacy past of like not getting, you know, enough ratifications, but in just last year, Virginia's general assembly passed a ratification resolution for the ERA. But then it's like, I, I think they're still figuring it out at this point around whether or not like the deadline has expired for it to have achieved like the 38 ratifications that it needed. So, wow. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Kind of interesting little tidbit there, but okay. fun fact, but also not a fun fact. Right. right. Like, yeah. No, I know. Would have been obviously much more exciting had it just like passed like in the show. So, anyway. <laughs> All right. that would have been great. Whatever. All right. So, Bailey, you were an analog astronaut. Okay. This tiny little sure. habitation module. Let's say you were indefinitely there. And people, you you weren't sure when you were coming back because it kept getting delayed. How hard would that be? Yeah, I think the biggest thing about analog is you know the end. Yeah, but if you didn't, so if it just keeps being pushed off, like yeah, that would be really tough. Or like, you have to. I think it'd be easier in some ways if you just knew there was no end date and you had to like figure it out. But I don't know, that would be hard too. You think there's any way you could smuggle another bottle onto the next resupply rocket? Not a chance. I couldn't get near resupply rocket. New security rules. FBI's everywhere looking for commies are in the bed. It's ridiculous. This is one of the scariest things about space is because you know, you still they're still reliant on yeah. Earth, right? Like like when we explored here on Earth, you know, you'd go to a new place and there would be water and food and stuff. It's kind of awkward because everyone can hear this phone call. <laughs> Oh, that's the other thing. When you talk about analogs and stuff like that, oh yeah, it's, there's no privacy. And yet, it's hard. And yet, like, I heard about that analog mission that was like on the Habitat podcast where it was like a romantic relationship yeah, happened. Yeah. Like, I, how, <laughs> how is that possible? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the beds are in their own little room. So I guess technically you could have private conversations, but like... There's no way that the rest of the crew did not know immediately that that was going on. I'm uh, sure they knew yeah. something was up. That's a whole other podcast. We should do that sometime. <laughs> Deal. Rated PG-13. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't hang out with a lot of bikers, artists, or militant homosexuals. Oh my God. Where were you? And this is how Last it was, Saturday? right? Like this yeah. is, um, this probably happened bed. in some form or another at yeah. NASA, right? Yeah. Well, that was the whole controversy with girlfriend. like the naming of the James Webb telescope. That yeah, would be. I feel like so many people yeah, were right. like against the name because against they that, felt yeah. like Webb was complicit in allowing stuff like this to happen. 
also like could you imagine like the fear that you live with daily like trying to conceal that that's, and i hate that right like that's it's kind of the same thing we we're talking about is if you could spend all that energy going into something like more productive like space yes. travel right like humanity would be so much further along if we stopped making people feel inferior for random reasons or that they were going to be attacked or judged or kicked out of their job or a committee of Alan. I'm angry. My cat is sensing it. <laughs> Your cat's like, I'm here to help you cope through this. this part of the world. Yeah, she's like, calm yeah. down. Like, Everyone was surprised that a Republican governor suddenly threw his weight behind the ERA. You're saying it was because NASA moved a contract to Illinois? A huge contract. What? In a district where he I know. needed support this is like, for his own re-election campaign. It's like a big unveiling of information point. here. I don't love that the ERA is getting tied oh, into God. this failure, this mission failure, I have to say. I don't, I, uh, I'm processing. I'm, this is one of my biggest frustrations, the space in general is. The polar, like the, the politics of it. Yeah. Yep. This is I'm not okay a with this. Storm at NASA. This isn't even my it's timeline, nice. and I'm not okay with it. That would be really tough. It'd be really hard. Yeah, and then it's like she obviously feels like she can't burden him with like the fact that their son's like. Yeah, in you don't get this much time to talk to yeah. him. Yeah. Like, why would you bring this exactly? Yeah. So then she's got to shoulder oh. all of that herself. It's like. Well, and she's, and she's raising kind of, you know, the other family, too. She doesn't even have, like, Your the other very I know. You. Your grandma for three weeks. I yeah, I mean, I think it's, like, in the beginning of the show, we kind of don't like Karen because she feels kind of petty and mean. But then it's, like, you, but you see the Yeah, but then, like, as yeah. it goes on, you're like, wait, but Karen has no support system either. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you can understand yeah. why she feels that way. Doing so could open you to yeah, being charged did with call revealing it. classified information and spending 20 years in a federal penitentiary. Do I make myself clear? Please. Ah! Throw a table! Ugh! Every system. I'm angry. I'm sure this happens all the time. The people deserve to know. There aren't any openings on the red, white, or blue teams. She did it. Like one. I also don't like what no, she I did know. It, but she I'm did like, it. I do not support like blackmail in any way, shape, or form. However, it is interesting because she waited to find out what he was gonna do. Oh yeah. And so it's like when she realized she, she him, how yeah. corrupt it was, yeah. then she was like, "But I still don't love it." I'm like, honestly, but yeah. oh, I love that. <laughs> also, this just cracks me up. Like the little hops, I love it. <laughs> He's moving. He is, yeah. But also, I just love the footage. I'm like, this is amazing. I don't think that's super... Oh. And then you're like, is my mind playing tricks or is it real? What is it? And I will say this whole thing of like, he's just like, He's like, I'm going to go for a walk, right? Right. As of right now, that's not very feasible. Right. <laughs> like, that oxygen has to come from somewhere. Yes. Yeah. I feel like, you know, well, we'll see. Because now it's like if he, find, if he discovers something kind of interesting, then these like apartment hunting trips will be worth it. But yeah, otherwise, I'm like, I am kind of questioning. I'm like, would, would NASA be supportive of these like extended EVAs out just – Especially by himself. Yeah, right? yeah, like, I feel like it's actually quite dangerous. So Yeah, well, at least for our EVAs, you always had to have at least two people, I mm -hmm. think. Two or three. Interesting. I think you always had to have two people. Either, like, I think you had to have two people in the hab and two people out on EVAs at all times. Mm -hmm. So with three people, they obviously can't do yeah. that. Um, I don't think they do EVAs with all three of them, in theory. But um, anyways, but whenever he's out, right, walking around or whatever... Someone's got to be playing Habcom back in, like, the habitat. Not back on Earth, but in the habitat, which means, you know, just for him to go walk around, you're taking away two people and oxygen. And, yeah, I hope one day we get to that point, but I don't think that's going to be soon enough to where he's like, I'm going to go apartment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Well, I feel like you're going to have some really interesting perspectives on the next few episodes because of like the whole crew dynamic psychology of like living in yeah. confined quarters. So I feel like your experience as an analog astronaut is going to be quite interesting um, for upcoming episodes. But okay, so really information, exciting. I guess, on this episode, what are our thoughts? Did we like it? How are we feeling about it? This one made me, it, it, it challenged mindset to me. Um, the other one was a lot of adrenaline about, you know, are they going to do it? That whole yeah. Thing. Um, this is like, all right, let's, let's talk about the stuff that people don't want to talk mm -hmm. about. Um, yeah. The whole bringing in like the LGBTQ um, plus community, that was interesting. And yet another thing that I did not consider, right? Like, it's something, uh, you, okay, so as a space nerd, you learn the history differently, if that makes sense. Like, I know American history. I know world history. I know what happened in the 60s. I know what happened in the 70s. And then I have my space history of Apollo happened in 1969, Apollo 11 happened in 1969. And when you start crossing over like that, it starts really, it almost feels like I have two separate timelines by myself, the space timeline and then the, like, rest of history timeline and when they start meshing you start seeing yeah. the corruption and the like the the, the rights movements and it's just it, it's frustrating to me because i hold space to like such a pristine standard that it's very frustrating when it's not it is yeah i mean it's definitely tough i mean i feel like there's a fair amount of like unlearning that has to happen as well like about that because i agree like i think in terms of like how when you think about how space history was taught or even in like a lot of the books up until like maybe, you know, I think now more recently we're starting to see some books that have like a little bit more of a critical take on things. Um, actually, there's a book that's coming out very soon that I'm really excited about by Fred Sharman, um, which is like, it's called Space Forces. And so I'm really excited to read that because I think that's going to be super interesting. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think it's important too, because right, I mean, I feel like if you love something, like if you love space, then it's like you also have to challenge it too. You know what I mean? And so when I think and, and that's how you feel the love. Yeah, and so I think that's the thing. But you're right. I mean, there's a lot that I feel like as more and more gets uncovered or as we learn more, or we just kind of take a more critical lens to looking at things and you know, we do kind of realize that hey, like that like Apollo history and narrative isn't really the whole story. And I think it's really important to like, th there's a lot of talk about this. I think it is important to be able to separate mm -hmm. it, right? Like it, it's this weird thing where you have to be able to separate it, but also not so much that you only look at the good, mm -hmm. right? You still have to acknowledge the good that we've done and the inspiration that comes from all this and all the stuff that makes my heart all warm and fuzzy while still holding accountable all the BS, Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of these people, a lot of these you know, historic figures, I mean, they had very complicated, in some cases, even pretty troubled pasts and backgrounds and things like that. So, you know, I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, we can't, but I think it's, but I think it's really good that we're starting to like consider that. And that's why I like the show. I like that it brings up a lot of these things that probably weren't get. I mean, it, when have you like prior to this show, when have you ever seen something like this in a show that's like, you know, with a historic narrative on space? Yeah, where you can challenge these things almost in modern day language, yeah. right? Of history. Exactly. Yeah, that's a really. So aspect. that's why I love it so much, is because it's got it's it's just yeah, it's very interesting that kind of perspective.